All right, back on Morning Line, our final segment talking about new legislation which could impact child abuse reporting, who steps forward, whether or not you're kept anonymous or not. Numbers on the screen, Don Harper, Steve Warner, both with us this morning. Stephen Warner, um, Child Advocacy Centers of Tennessee and Nashville Children's Alliance. Thank you both for coming on. Real quick, before I've got a question for you about the process on this legislation, but yeah, child abuse, DCS says it, and you guys know, but physical abuse, non-accidental trauma or physical injury of a child or failure to protect a child from harm. Neglect, failure to provide for a child's physical survival needs to the extent that there is harm or risk of harm to the safety and health. Sexual abuse, when a child is involved in intentional sexual acts that produce sexual arousal or gratification for the perpetrator. And psychological harm, a repeated pattern of caregiver behavior or extreme incidents that convey to the children that they are worthless, flawed, unloved, unwanted, undangered, all of those absolutely awful. All of those need to be policed if people are involved with doing any of that to children. With regard to this bill that would require <coughs> folks to identify themselves, you two, um, what is the process behind the scenes in terms of you having contact? Um, it's, it's being sponsored, I guess, by Representative Clay Doggett in the, uh, the House, Senator uh, Janice Bowling in the Senate. Um, have you approached them, talked to them? And I know they're probably lobbying on both sides. Clearly, both of you have probably with this bill how, how do you uh, approach them with this so the, the process is it did not pass last session right and so for anything to happen it, the the responsors or whoever is gonna have to refile it for the next session of the General Assembly um, and we don't know if they're gonna do it it hasn't been filed yet um, with their, I did have a conversation with representative Doggett um, on Tuesday briefly um, I suspect and I won't speak definitively that he will file something, but he's expressed to both DCS and to us that he's willing to work with us to make sure that the situation is addressed in a way that doesn't cause harm to kids. Neither one of the sponsors, I think, are trying to do something malicious. They, they have identified a problem, and they're trying to correct that problem. Um, and I will not deny that there probably is abuse of the, the law that is on the books. We want to work with the sponsors of these bills to make sure that it corrects a problem instead of creating one. Yeah, um, and that's so the if trick. He yeah. to file something, he's going to file it before the next session. And that's the trick. I mean, who knows? They may not reintroduce it. They may come back with something different. Do either of you have any suggestion? Um, you know, as you said, you just said, Stephen, maybe you could find something that's not potentially this harmful to reducing people making the calls. Is, are there any other options? I don't know what else you could do. Do you have a thought on that, Don? I mean, is there an alternative to what they proposed here that might help prevent false reports? I am sure that there are, there is, there's gotta be um, an alternative. I, I don't, I don't have one off the top of my head, but I'm willing to work with, with any of the representatives in coming up with a solution. Yeah, sure. I mean, and, Stephen, and, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. The CACs are not the only folks, the, the Child Advocacy Centers are not the only folks that are opposed to this bill. The district attorneys are opposed to it, the sexual assault centers are opposed to it. There's a lot of us that work on the victim side that really have concerns with this bill. Um, and DCS is opposed to it. I mean, they've gone on record saying that they're opposed to the bill. All of us are willing to come up with our legislative allies, and I would consider Representative Doggett an ally um, who wants to do the right thing um, to help improve the situation um, within DCS's processes. Absolutely, there's room for improvement. Everyone who's worked with them will tell you that they are a um, agency who takes on some really tough battles and they're human. They deal with staffing issues, they deal with uh, funding issues, they deal with ambiguities in the law. That's where the advocacy community can support them and help um, give them effective feedback so that we can sponsor bills that will help improve the safety of our children. Um, and I, and I fully expect that Representative Doggett and the Senator will be um, in communication with us asking for input. And then the legislature, General Assembly's job is to solve these problems. And so when they bring up a problem, it's they've had someone talk to them about an experience they have that has illustrated an issue with the Tennessee law. That's where we're at. And we wanna make sure that in, solving a problem we don't make the problem worse for all the other kids yeah and we're fundamentally i think this is a problematic bill yeah uh, you know I, I, to me 
and I'm a constituent, so my thought is that it's an imperfect system. I frankly can't think of a clear-cut solution to this. There may be, as, as, as uh, Don says, but we may have the best scenario right now. Now, I, I would feel differently about this if there were just, just a much larger percentage of just false cases being done rampantly and ridiculous and ruining all these families. But my take is, I think, uh, unfortunately, a necessary evil of the system we have set up is there are going to occasionally be families that go through a rough time and hopefully ultimately be made whole again, but very difficult, not to minimize that in any way because of some false report and there's no way to, to get retribution for it. But on the other hand, that pales in comparison to me of because of something like this passing, if someone doesn't call and a child is beaten to death because someone was afraid of having to tell their name. As bad as I feel for those families that might go through a difficult time, and I've talked to families that have, and it's rough, and I sympathize, that pales in comparison to a child being left without any help and being beaten to death because someone was afraid to call in because this bill was going to require that they give their name. And anyone who disagrees with me on that, in my opinion, is flat wrong between the death of a child and a tough go of it for a family, which I sympathize with. But there's no comparison there. There is zero comparison to those two things. All right, so I'm trying to get a handle on why anyone would be for this. I think that that comparison right there has been laid out. And I would argue that anyone accused of a crime has a whole system of safety nets of preponderance of evidence beyond reasonable doubt, a judge and a jury of their peers that are making decisions whether a crime was committed. That child who's being beaten doesn't have any safety net other than this. And so from the CAC's perspective, the more we can do to protect those children and put laws in the books that after that safety net, this is it. Um, you're not going to get convicted of a crime unless there's significant evidence. But that child's going to be continued to be beaten or abused until someone makes a report. Uh, they asked the question during the public summer hearing um, around why does DCS believe this bill matters? And their response was DCS can't prosecute what isn't reported. Right. DCS can't investigate what isn't reported. Anything we can do to ease reporting allows the system to begin to come into play to protect those child, children. And, and it's real clear, too, right? I, and that kind of led me into this last question as we wrap things up. You know, the DCS gets on these cases. The vast majority, probably close to 99.99999% of them, because of tips that come in. It's not like they're out there looking around and they see it and they happen to be walking in the grocery store and see someone pop a kid and they take steps. That may happen once in a blue moon where there's a DCS investigator that witnesses something like that themselves. But you know as well as I do that almost 100% of all DCS investigations which save lives are the result of tips. Correct? Is that it? Correct. So Absolutely. It's, it's crucial that those tips and the tipsters feel comfortable making those calls because if that dries up and goes away, then, you know, they, they have children that are going to be left in dangerous situations. Is that ultimately what it comes down to? Uh, 22,000 reports last year made anonymously. So and not maybe some of those would have been gone on record, but that's 22,000 children in Tennessee that an investigation was started because of an anonymous report. And, that, and as far as those anonymous reports, because they were anonymous, doesn't mean that they were false. In fact, probably many of them were very legitimate. There may have been a portion that could have been deemed, um, you know, either something they couldn't prove or maybe just a malicious one where someone, as we talked about, a, an angry nanny or a, uh, an ugly divorced custody battle. But uh, that's a minority. There are very few of those. Is that not the case? It's hard to prove. I mean, you're, you're trying to prove something that um, you don't have evidence for. Uh, now, how many, what percentage of those reports were unsubstantiated, which means that they were evaluated and said, no, there isn't enough evidence? Uh, we don't know. Yeah. Um, DCS we could probably tell us, but um, it's not many of them. Um, and the, the system that is in place is to do due diligence and investigate the, the allegations. <clears throat> DCS doesn't take children from a home without a judge authorizing it. Right. And so even in that, DCS really doesn't have any authority outside of the court system. 
They simply do the investigations. Right. Kind of like the TBI. They put the investigations together, then they get with the DEA, and then ultimately a judge decides. So uh, next legislative session uh, starts, what, in January? In yeah. January. So, well, I don't know. Do you know uh, it's something that would be uh, on the books if they're going to do it again uh, before session starts? You guys will catch wind of that once it starts. Uh, you have no idea right now whether the uh, – you talked with one of the sponsors. Did he give you an indication he may or may not do it uh, again? Um, the conversation was – uh, useful, but it was not clear cut whether he was going to file another bill again. Um, he did say that he wants to work with DCS to help make the system better. Okay. Um, I respect that. Yeah. I suspect something will get filed. They filed, what, almost 2,000 bills last okay. year? So something pop up. Um, whether this particular bill gets drawn up, pulled up again, we don't know. Steve Warner, I appreciate you coming on. Don Harper, I also appreciate you coming on. Both of you, thank you, thank and thank you, you, so you for the work much. you do, all right? Thank Absolutely. you so much, Nick. Thank you for bringing awareness to this. Sure. It's Thanks a pleasure. So good, good program. Appreciate you joining us. We'll talk again. We'll take a break now. When we come back, programming note right after this. Stay with us.